Hello and welcome to the Pixel Street Podcast, episode 86. The year's 2020, John. You We're living it? in the future. We are living in the future. We're coming to you live from 2020. Um, Yeah, welcome to the new year. We're back. We took a few weeks off, played some games. Uh, I didn't really play all that much. I thought I was going to play more than I did, but I got kind of busy, so... Um, yeah, this is the Pixel Street Podcast, where each and every week we get together and talk about one of the things we love most, and that is video games. Uh, as always, I'm one of your hosts, Joel Campos, and I am joined by the man who... What did you do, John? <laughs> you gotta start thinking of these a little earlier. I know. <laughs> I, I, I literally got through that since I was like, fuck, I didn't think of anything. <laughs> uh, man, Pre-ordered I don't know. ordered the Pokemon Let's just think of a way that Connor died. <laughs> Um, okay connor connor was sucked into his new pc that he built so he's dead i mean some might say that the pc got sucked into him Ooh, gross i'll I'll let you anticipate that or i don't know um <laughs> it's been a long day yeah no. um yeah this week we're going to be talking about pokemon sword and shield um uh, that's our there was old a... one i think <laughs> That, yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, th- that is uh, going to be about the Pokemon Direct that happened today. It was mainly focused on that. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the best gaming uh, reveals, I guess, of CES 2020. Uh, CES, it's not typically gaming-centric, but every year it's there's a few things that come out of it that are interesting. But I feel like every year there's also, like, half of those things are just like, okay. Yeah, I... Uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll be interested to see what we have when we get to that because besides the PS5 logo, I didn't see anything. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, in terms of like console gaming, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of PC nerd shit that Connor's not here to back up. So it is what it is. Yep. Um, yeah. Before we get to that, you can find us on uh, most podcast platforms. Uh, I think we're on pretty much all of them now including Spotify, which is great because I typically use Spotify the most. Um, and you can follow us on Twitter at Pixel Street Pod. Email us, pixelstreetpodcast at gmail.com, or check out our Facebook by searching for Pixel Street Podcast uh, over there. Um, yeah, let's just get right into it. Let's get into the new releases coming out in All the right. next week here. Yeah. And, uh, well, I can tell you now, there's not much. No, there is nothing. Um, until we hit... What day is it? The 17th? Yeah, the 17th is where Dragon Ball Z Kakarot comes out, and that is my first game of the year that I'm really looking forward to. But uh, we see this every year, like the first at least couple weeks of the year, completely dead. Like there's just games in here that I've never heard of. Um, shout uh, out and to... I'm looking, I'm looking through this, and there's a lot of Atelier games it, coming it, out. Atelier? I'm assuming on... Yeah, I don't know. I don't on know. PS, they're coming to PS4 and Switch mainly, it looks like. But it's like, it's listing all of them piecemeal, and then there's like a collection of them. I don't know. There's just like, there's like five of them here. Yeah, but uh, you didn't mention the Xbox One exclusive to end all Xbox One exclusives, uh, Animal Friends Adventure. Are you sure that's exclusive? I don't know. It's just coming to Xbox One on that day. <laughs> <laughs> And I've never heard of it on anything else, so I was going with that. Oh, man. Ugh. Yeah, it is what it is, man. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just that time of year. Yeah, it's that time of the year. Especially, like, this is literally going to be one of the biggest years in video games. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I uh, put up a tweet the other day, just like listing off like seven of the games that we know about. And it's like, we have Halo Infinite, Final Fantasy VII, Doom Eternal. Um, uh, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Avengers, Last of Us Part Two, and like most of those are just the first half of the year. The only like second half game we know of so far is Halo Infinite. Like that's ridiculous. Games, games, games. Lots of games. Lots of games. Yeah, we're gonna be fucking drowning in a few months here. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to get into kind of our most anticipated games and stuff in a little bit here. So, uh, stay tuned towards the end. That's going to be our topic of the show. Um, yeah, but 
really nothing coming out, so should we just move on to what we're playing? Yeah, what are you playing? Uh, I have been playing Destiny 2. Uh, I played a lot this weekend with the Respawn Aim Fire guys. Uh, great podcast. Definitely go listen to that. I listen to them every week. But yeah, um, we tried doing the Leviathan raid again. We did it like a month ago, I think. We've been trying to do it every month. But we tried doing it this time on Prestige. And it basically it's the same exact thing, but it's a lot more difficult and like minor differences uh, in terms of the puzzle mechanics of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, I had to burp there. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a pain in the ass. We did not finish it. We okay. started. Is that as... the first raid? Like the one yeah, that came a... with the base game? Yeah, it's the very first. And I don't get it at all because it says that the light level requirement is 750. But I think that it scales up with you because like we were all like 900 to 950 mm-hmm. and it was beating our ass. So I, I'm just assuming that like it says the light level recommended is 750. But if you're all higher, I think it's going to scale up. I didn't look into it at all, but that's the only way I could see it ever being beaten. Is because like if I was 750, I feel like I would have no chance. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we started on Saturday... I want to say like 2 p.m. Central Time. And then I played with them until close to 7.30 or 8. So we were going for a while. And we weren't even at the boss fight yet. We were still in the third of the three rooms before the boss. Hmm. And I was like, I got to go, guys. My girlfriend's giving me the look like, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) You know know what I mean? It's like... yeah. Where if she wasn't here, I would have played that until like 5 in the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so I was like, yeah, I got to go. Um, I wasn't going to leave unless they found somebody, though. And luckily, they were able to find somebody to take my spot. But yeah, we were doing that. And then they played more, and they beat the last room. And then the next night, Chad DMs me on Twitter. He's like, hey, it was Monday night. He's like, hey, we're going to try and finish this thing. Because the reset is Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. So... I get on, we start at 8 p.m. Central, and I was fucking playing till 1.30 in the morning. And we were coming so close, but we did not finish it. Ah, that sucks. It was very frustrating. Um, But yeah, I don't know if I'll go back and try and do the prestige. It was too stressful. Uh, It took too much time out. And like, honestly, there's like newer stuff in Destiny I'd rather be doing than Mm -hmm. doing, you know, the the old ass raid. So I talked to Chad and I think that the next time we're just going to try and do a standard raid, Mm -hmm. but like every month we're going to go through and do a different raid as they have released. So yeah, it's been fun. I've been really enjoying playing with those guys. So it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you? What second installment of a game have you played? (laughs) So I've been playing a lot of Hitman two lately. Uh, Back when the first Hitman, the one that was like, split up in the different episodes was the free game of the month i really was talking about how much i really enjoyed that game so uh over the break i got hitman 2 on sale and i've been playing it non-stop uh so it's pretty much just more of hitman uh with new maps and everything and a, a few tweaks and everything that make the experience better also if you own the first hitman you can bring all of those maps up into hitman 2 so it'll be like all updated and everything which is awesome so i've been playing this game pretty much every night for like the last two weeks or so sorry sorry i don't want to cut you off but when you say all updated what does that mean so like there's just like little tweaks and everything so like say uh you knock out someone and you leave them you don't hide them or anything and uh they find them uh, it, a like camera will like pop up in the left in the top left corner, showing you what was found, uh, and like just just like showing you that hey you messed up in this area. People don't go in this area or you'll be suspicious. Uh, there's also just like it's just like little tiny tweaks that you really wouldn't think would make a huge impact, but after you add all of them up and get to playing, you're like wow this is such a better experience to the point that. Uh, I don't think I could go back to the first Hitman right now and play it because there's just things missing from there that it, it, it's still a good game, but it's just the little like uh, quality of life changes that they made into the second game uh, just make oh, okay. it so much better. So yeah, uh, I'm not 
naturally a stealth kind of person and i absolutely love this game which i think is saying a lot because it's just there's probably if you include the maps from the first game there's probably about like 13 or 14 different maps to play through each one is just a big playground for you to just go to work on your contracts uh just see what kind of interesting kills you can get and everything um there's like always there's always at least a few different like mission stories in each level where it will kind of like lead you through an interesting kill otherwise you can just go off and do your own thing like this one i did uh i was talking to this head of this director of this bank and i uh distracted her near her um record player and she found an award that she had and she like picked it up and she was admiring it and put it on her table while i walked up behind her grabbed her head and just slammed her face down into the award and killed her with it and i was like oh i was not expecting <laughs> that at all <laughs> it's uh just, hey, it just it just it just told me to hit x yeah yeah pretty <laughs> much it, it will just say like x to eliminate or a or something like that and ah oh, man it's it's such a good game uh io interactive have been killing it with this and the other hitman uh the first hitman i'll admit i was one of the people that was like oh man not another episodic game and that really killed the first one hitman 2 i haven't really heard much about but i think that's mostly because of the crap that they got from the first game uh if you get the chance you definitely need to give this game a try because it is so much fun if anything just like look up youtube videos uh of a YouTube channel I watch it's called Outside Xbox. They play a lot of Hitman 2, and it's three of them, so they'll like put up videos as like three different ways to play this map. Uh, they'll just do a, a a contract together, or they'll do what's called the elusive targets, which are like time targets. Say, uh, so actually they're bringing back an old target this month, which is Sean Bean the actor that like dies in everything well in the game he plays this guy who is constantly trying who is constantly uh escaping like assassination contracts and stuff like everyone's always trying to kill him so it's your job to like go in and actually kill him and uh so it's like a harder thing you can only have like one try at it so if you die or anything you're cut off like you can't play it until they like bring it back in the future or anything. Um, really cool stuff, man. Uh, definitely give it a try if you have the chance. Yeah, I, I know. I used to listen to the Giant Bomb guys a lot, and uh, they were really hot on. I think it was Hitman One that they were mm-hmm. playing all the time when I was listening, and they were always talking about how there were all these elusive targets that would show up in the game, like for limited time, mm-hmm. and it would really incentivize people to get back into the game and you know keep playing it oh yeah which i think is pretty cool but yeah i i remember the episodic portion of hitman one i remember thinking like like why are they doing it this way it yeah make it didn't sense. make much sense and i know hitman 2 it just all came out at once right yeah yeah hitman 2 everything is out there there's also uh expansion passes now that bring out a couple more maps and uh some other like clothes if- and weapons and stuff if you're watching the podcast on YouTube, I have like some Hitman gameplay going, and it looks pretty awesome. I've never actually watched somebody play through the game, and like this dude just like lured a guy mm-hmm. into an electric, uh, into like a like an electrical wire that's sitting in water, and then yeah. turned the generator on. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's so much fun. Um, that that might be a game that here in the future I actually stream. Uh, because it's it's you can just go about killing your contracts in so many creative ways uh it's just a big playground to just go to town on i I love it so is is the goal what happens after you kill your person do you have to like escape yeah yeah so uh you you can have a certain number of contracts for each uh, map uh usually it's like two or three but sometimes it's just the one um yeah, and once you kill them and everything, you just have to escape. There are, like, different areas in the map where you can escape from. Some areas you have to, like, unlock. So, like, say you have to escape, you want to escape by a vehicle, you have to find the key for it somewhere in the map, or you have to find the right thing to open a door or something. It's uh really interesting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'll have to check the game out for sure. Yeah, for sure. I just never. I, it's just one of those games I never got around to. Cause like you, I don't really like um, stealth games at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's uh really what's uh me watching outside Xbox is what got me into these games. Um, just it it just looks so much fun to me, so I gave it a try, and yeah, I love it. But uh, what else have you been playing? Um, so I started playing again. Let's go Pikachu. Um, yeah. so I got pokemon sword for christmas and uh i was telling john here right before the podcast i'm getting surgery on my knee next tuesday so i'm gonna be in my bed a lot so i'm gonna be playing a lot of switch Mm -hmm. um and i wanted to play through uh sword but then i realized i was like i never actually beat let's go pikachu like i like i know i've beaten you know the og games back Mm -hmm. in the day but i never got through this one so i was like "Uh, i'm gonna go back like i started sword I'll, I'll just talk about both of them right now um i started sword i played for a while i don't know how long exactly a few hours probably but that game just drags at the beginning and like it makes sense because like they're they want to get new kids you know into the mm-hmm. game and they got to teach fresh but like somebody as me who's played a pokemon game like frequently uh i don't necessarily want to sit there and listen about how all right this is so and so so and so is your rival you are going to fight with so-and-so through the whole game and you guys are going to help each other strengthen so you can eventually take on me, the gym master. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, it, it's just like too much to me. I wish that there was an option to kind of skip some of that. Because there like, there kind of is for the individual tutorials, but it's not much. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it just seemed to drag on a lot for me. So I literally played up until you pretty much leave home and then you get to that first kind of open worldy area. I don't know what they call that. What is that called? The uh, uh, wild area. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So yeah, I pretty much got to there and then I ran up to the doorstep of the, I'm assuming is the main town in the game or at least one of them. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I got there, I stopped. Um, and that's, when I was going to go play it again the next day, I was like, you know, I never beat Let's Go Pikachu. So I went back to that. And I've been playing through that. And I think uh, I have five gym badges now. So I'm getting there. But yeah. yeah, like I said, I'm getting surgery. So I'll be in my bed probably playing through both of these Pokemon games in the next week here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I also want to try and play some PS4. Like uh, I did the kind of funny Secret Santa and somebody sent me Days Gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also got, I I also want to play through horizon cause I never beat that. Yeah. That's one I've got to get to as well. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing in the past few weeks here. All right. Cool. Yeah. So uh, what else have you been playing? Um, so the latest game that I finished was Ori in the blind forest. And, uh, I kind of looked at this as like, Oh, will the wisp is coming out in March. I want to get through the first game, and I want to give that a try when it comes out. Uh, I originally downloaded Ori in the Blind Forest a long time ago, but for whatever reason at that time, I wasn't like really in the mood for that kind of game. Uh, I played it within the last week here, though, and uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, I've Did got... you beat it? What's that? Did you beat the game? Yeah, I beat it. It's a short game. Uh, it took me okay. probably four or five hours to beat it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so really short game. Uh, Lots of platforming, Metroidvania aspects to it. So if I really wanted to, I could go back in and play some more. Um, I just, I'm focusing on Hitman and other games at the moment. Um, Be sure to check out my Twitter at Revic Shadows. I uh, just put in a article last night for editing uh, for Xbox enthusiasts talking about why you need to play this game before Will the Wisp comes out because... uh, Man, everything from the music, the graphics, the story, just everything here is just brilliant. Um, Such a good game. Kind of what what is the story for this game? Because that's the one thing I don't think I ever understood. All right. So you play as Ori, who is kind of like a guardian spirit, who uh, is like born in the, the, I think they call it the tree spirit. It's just the big tree that like, kind of like a tree of life kind of thing. Uh, a storm knocks him out and he gets adopted by this like bear kind of thing 
Um, so the tree spirit is like searching for Ori because it wants it to come back home. So it's like sending out these light things. And, uh, well, this owl doesn't like it. So the owl attacks the tree, throws the entire forest in the disarray. And then Ori has to like go through and like save the forest pretty much. Uh, without like trying to spoil too much. That's, that, I think okay. that's a pretty good, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Just kind of like an amalgamation of everything. Yeah, description. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it it's a simple story, but man, it it gets so emotional. Uh, like the very beginning, the adopted like bear mother thing like dies, and you go on and you see like how the forest like withering away and everything is affected the lives of every creature in there and everything uh you even start feeling for the owl that attacked the tree and everything uh it, just so much there that you really are like wow this is great just great storytelling there's very little dialogue um it's just like hey ori we need to go here to find this thing to get into this temple or like little bits of uh description to kind of like give like the feelings of the characters in that moment um really cool stuff though uh definitely give it a try on game pass because i i i'm really glad that i went back to it and uh if you have seen any of the will of the wisp trailers and you're like wow this music sounds great the art style is brilliant the little bit of gameplay we saw looks good uh it, it definitely looks like it's going to be just another masterpiece to me um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to check it out. This looks like a good game that I could play on my bed, on my TV that's across my room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, um, it is on Switch now, if you want to buy it there. Um, yeah, I think I'll stick to Game Pass. Yeah, uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, the last game I'm going to talk about is Hellblade Sending a Sacrifice. Uh, before Ori, I started playing this, and uh, again, uh, the... The Hellblade 2 announcement at the Game Awards just really got me excited. I'm like, man, that looks amazing. I want to give the first game a try. And like Ori in the Blind Forest, I fell in love with this game. Um, the gameplay is pretty simple. It's a very linear game. Like, it's pretty much, hey, go on this path. There's, like, some puzzles, but it's, like, very simple puzzles. The combat is super simplistic as well. Uh, it wasn't really engaging or anything, but, man, the story is just brilliant. Uh, you're playing as Senua, who is who has this, like, psychosis thing where she constantly is hearing voices in her head, and uh, you have to play this game with a headset. It's the best way to do it because you, like, hear the voices all around you talking at all times. Uh, just brilliant stuff. Uh, I don't want to go into it any further because spoilers and stuff. But uh, if you're going to play Ori, you also need to give this game a try. Maybe not as soon as Ori since Hellblade 2 is very much in the beginning of its development, Phil Spencer said. But man, uh, just the story, the atmosphere, the music is just brilliant in this game. And uh, just another game on Game Pass to give a try. Yeah, I, I remember I told you we were talking about this and we did a stream last week. Um, yeah, we were talking about this and I told you I wanted to play it for sure. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that this was on Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. So, it uh, it started out as a PS4 exclusive and then uh, Microsoft bought Ninja Theory, the guys that make it, and yeah. then it came to Game Pass. Yeah, that's cool because this is a game I definitely thought was pretty cool looking just from seeing the trailers. And yeah, like you said, it, it very much seems like a easy game to spoil. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, like, uh, like Ori, it's also a short game. It probably took me about eight or nine hours to beat. So, short yeah, I game. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Knock it out in like a week, mm -hmm. playing an hour a day or yeah. so. It's 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 a great game to knock off of your backlog. Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Uh, any other games that you've uh, like maybe played ten minutes of or anything? Um, so I bought Final Fantasy VII, the original one, on my Switch because really? I've never played the Final Fantasy games before. Well, I played a little bit of fifteen, but like I've never gotten into it. Uh, Final Fantasy VII was like ten bucks at the time, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll buy it on my Switch, try and play it before uh, the remake comes out, and I, I'm put quite a few hours into it I, i'm probably like five or six hours in i 
I'm at the spot where I'm leaving Midgar, I think it's called, the first town. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've played a bit of that. Um, it, it, I probably haven't played in about a week or so right now, but uh, it, it seems pretty cool so far. Um, I'm getting into it. I uh, I just, uh, I, I think I need a little break from it because it is very much the same thing over and over again at least so yeah. far in the beginning here. Um, but uh, it seems cool, and I'll uh, definitely dive into it more in the next month or so. Yeah, I remember playing it as a kid, and, you know, like, as a kid, I was, you know, a dumb kid. Mm-hmm. So, like, I didn't necessarily know what I was doing most of the time. I was just kind of making my way through it. I don't think I ever beat it, but I remember enjoying it a lot because I also enjoyed Legend of Dragoon, mm-hmm. which was a very similar type of game. Um, just, you know, one of those old JRPGs, essentially. But I am excited for the remake of Final Fantasy VII because they're changing up the game style. Yeah, like, yeah. Like it's, 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 it's much not m- just this turn-based, you know, like, repetitive thing. Yeah, it's closer it's very to much gonna Final have Fantasy VII, set, uh, or not seven, uh, fifteen, and kind of Kingdom Hearts kind of inspired yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm very excited for that. But yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't mind going through and trying to play through Final Fantasy VII again, but honestly who has the time <laughs> yeah like, it, it's a i looked it up on how long to beat and it said it takes about like 30 hours just to beat the main story like that's without like doing like side missions and stuff yeah. i was like ah oh, man so definitely not something that i'm gonna knock out all at one time but uh I, i've put a pretty good chunk in at the beginning here and it, it seems pretty cool yeah cool cool all right, well, let's get into the news. Uh, you want to start with CES? All right, yeah, sure. So uh, CES happened this last week. Uh, man, I can never remember what it's actually called. What's, like, the full name of it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, let's no. Let's here and see. I should have looked this up beforehand. <laughs> it's going to be something electronic something oh what man this is really gonna CS bug me now stand for i'm googling it right now oh no consumer uh, electronics show okay cool all right so the consumer electronics show happened this last week um not much like big gaming news in here there there's some little things in here so uh uh tech radars samuel roberts put up a list of the best gaming reveals of ces 2020 um so Sony was there. They talked a bit about the PS5. Nothing new, really. It's just the the Dude, the logo. I was the getting logo, to that. Man. I was getting to that. Are you kidding me? This Bef- is the most hype thing ever. Shut up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, they uh, like went into like the haptic triggers on the console on the controller and like just the like faster load times and everything. Everything that they've talked about within the last six months or so. And then yeah, like Joel was saying, they revealed the brand new PS five logo, which is completely out there. You wouldn't ever expect it to be something like this. Uh it's the PS4 logo with a five instead of a four. Um there was a it's, bit... also, it's also a PS three logo. Yeah, yeah the PS three four <laughs> and five. Yeah. So yeah. I mean okay. But yeah, I I didn't really think that there was any need for them to even be on the stage talking about this, and then they like also talked about their making a car, which was weird. Um, so also A and D, <laughs> did you hear about the A and D thing with the fake Xbox? No, yeah, what was that? All right, so A and D was like uh, showing pictures of the Xbox Series X. And uh, you know how in the original announcement for the Series X that it only showed, like, the front of the console. Uh, AMD brought up a fake render of the back of the console, and everyone was, like, looking at it like, oh, (laughs) it says it has two USB-Cs and two HDMIs. It's got all these different (laughs) ports, and it was completely fake. So... (laughs) Who... who It doesn't make any sense. Why not just use... The one that you can get from like Microsoft's website. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't know. That uh, didn't make 
much sense to me, but who knows? Uh, I didn't think it was that big of a deal or anything, but I thought it was pretty funny. Um, also, Phil Spencer changed his Twitter photo to be the console's the Xbox Series X chip, and it says something like Project Scarlet and 8K on it. All right. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, we already know that it can run up to 8K. Uh, there was some talk about the teraflops in the Xbox One Series, or Xbox Series X, and then the PS5. Uh, apparently, the Series X is going to have 12 teraflops of power, where the Xbox One X has six. So it should be about double the power of the X. Uh, and the then flops, also, bro. The flops. The flops. And then uh, it's rumored that the PS5 is about 9.7 or so, so a bit weaker, but. That's all speculation, but that was coming from a uh, digital foundry who are a very refutable, reputable uh, source. We'll see what comes of that in the future. Uh, moving back to this article here, uh, it looks like Alienware made like a Nintendo Switch knockoff. Uh, <laughs> kind of. I like. It, I, I don't necessarily know what. I don't know if it's. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's like a thing. So it kind of looks like a Joy-Con that is connected, and you like pull it out and then put your phone in the middle of it, and then you're playing. Like no, you're, that. you're talking about the accessory. Oh, sorry, I, I moved down too far. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is. I don't know. Just a lot of people are gonna try uh, knocking off the the Switch right now because it's so popular. So this uh, the Alienware thing is actually like a handheld pc thing um yeah it's just a handheld that's packing gaming pc specs into a heavy according to our man on the ground handheld device it's unclear if it'll ever actually launch as a consumer device and dell didn't reveal the specs of the ufo concept but it's pretty cool that it can play demanding games like the division 2 away from a desktop or console cool idea we'll never actually well like they said we might not ever actually see this as something yeah, it, you can buy or anything. Yeah, I have a feeling something like this would be super expensive. Oh yeah, big time. Um, and also, I'd honestly rather just use XCloud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with, with this next accessory down here. Uh, yeah, go into it. Um, it's essentially just looks like two Joy Cons. John already described it pretty yeah. much. It just looks like two Joy Cons that can connect together without a middle thing, like the Joy Con can. Mm -hmm. um but yeah it, it looks like there it probably comes with a uh is this by razor yeah razor uh it probably comes with some sort of um thing to hold your phone in between them so it essentially acts as a switch i i think it it itself is the thing that holds the phone in place because oh, so there's like rubber grip i I, I think it like actually you pull it out put your phone in and then it like clips in or something like huh. that I'm just wondering how that would work because not all phones are, you know, the same exact size. Well, it, I mean, if it's uh, it, it, it probably probably your only problem would be like the width of it. So, like the length of it probably wouldn't be so bad. I wouldn't think because it would just extend more. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot more companies come out with stuff like this, and I'm sure that razors is probably gonna be more expensive. <laughs> than most of them mm -hmm. because razor products like this typically tend to be pricey yep uh um, finishing off here msi revealed a 300 hertz gaming laptop and nvidia debuted a 360 hertz g-sync monitor cool i don't care moving on <laughs> dude you don't want to talk about how amd is targeting 1080p players no uh, all right so uh today <laughs> uh there was a new pokemon direct not Nintendo Direct, Pokemon Direct, uh, which was kind of disappointing to me. I'm, I'm really hoping for like a big Nintendo Direct here soon. Uh, with this coming out, we're probably gonna wait until February for that. But whatever. Uh, so, Pokemon Game Freak, I should say, uh, they announced that Pokemon Home will be coming to. Uh, well, it will be releasing in February. So that's the service that you can transfer your Pokemon like from Pokemon Go into Sword and Shield. And uh, I think Ultra Sun and Moon are in there as well. A uh, bunch of different stuff there. Uh, surprisingly, they announced Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX, 
which is a remake of a Nintendo DS game that came out about 15 years ago. Uh, that releases on March 6th. Um, I've never played it myself, but if it's getting a remake, it must have some kind of fan following. I mean, it's Pokemon. It, I already know it has a fan following, but this game in particular, I haven't looked into, but hey, it's coming in March. Uh, that'll be something to look into. Um, and then for Pokemon Sword and Shield, there are two new expansion passes coming to the games. Uh, one for each side, which will run $30 and come with two add-ons. So you're paying about $15 for add-on. It's a lot like the Breath of the Wild Season Pass uh, expansion thing, where I think it was only available in the Season Pass, but once you bought it, you got both of those. So um, this adds two new areas and more than 200 new and returning Pokemon into the game. So lots of people are happy about all the new Pokemon coming in and their Wait, older how many? favorites. 200? Uh, over 200, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, that, I know a, that's a, a sizable increase. Uh, yeah. The the Pokédex and Sword and Shield, I want to say, was like just under five hundred. So yeah, quite a big jump there. Um, I'm not quite sure yet if uh, these new Pokémon are only available in the new areas or if they'll be everywhere. But I did see that they already updated the game so that uh, you can get the Galarian Slowpoke right now, which is just Slowpoke with like some yellow on his head and tail. Um, yeah, uh, so a lot of exciting stuff for Pokemon coming forward. Uh, it'll probably bring me back into the game because like when I reviewed the game, I beat it within a week and I haven't gone back since. I just haven't felt the need to. Like I, I did everything I wanted to. I, I got my legendaries. I beat the. Um, What's his name? The the Pokemon champion. Leon. Leon. There we go. I beat Leon. I raised my Cinderace, which was my starter Pokemon, to level 100 and maxed him out. So, like, I was like, okay, I'm done. I don't really think I have anything left to do. So, uh, this will probably bring me back to the game down the road, but we'll see. Uh, are Have you seen this stuff at all? Are you excited for it? Uh, yeah, I watched it this morning. I, I think it's pretty cool. Do you think they're still going to do a, another iteration of the game? Like you, I really you hope not. I yeah. really hope not. I think it would be... I, I, I agree. I think it would be the worst move for them if they did that. Maybe... it's like they're triple dipping. If Because, if, yeah, I already don't like that they're still doing the multiple releases for the copies. Like, it, like it made... Like Sword Shield? Yeah, yeah. It made sense back in the day on the Game Boy to try and, like, advertise the game link, the cord link and everything for trading and battling. It doesn't make sense now that the internet is such a big thing and, like, I can just, I could trade or battle with you if I really wanted to, just at any moment. Uh, I wasn't a big fan that they did that. I really hope in the future they go away from that. I think making let's say Pokemon gun is like the one that people always say, like <laughs> if they do that, it's the worst move that they could possibly make. Yeah. At the moment. I, I think that this expansion pass with the two, you know, DLCs, I think that this, this is the new way that they're replacing that. Yeah. Yeah. No, this makes sense to me. This works. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about there not being enough Pokemon. They're adding in over 200. Who's to say that they couldn't just add another expansion pass down the line. Like that's, it, yeah, it's completely in the realm of possibility. Yeah, like yeah, just updated down the line saying, "Hey, here are the rest of the Pokemon." Yeah. So, uh, this is something I really hope that they just stick with going forward. I agree. I know a lot of people were hoping that during the direct we were going to get like uh, another Let's Go. I think it's way too early. Uh, I know some people were also calling for like a Diamond and Pearl remake. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff is just too early now. Like, do we really want that? Because, because we just got Sword and Shield in November. The year before, we got Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. We're getting uh, uh, the Mystery Dungeon game here in a couple months. Pokemon Go, as we're about to go into, is still huge. Like, I I think they can give it some time before they bring out any more of those remakes or anything. Um, I I would. I'm completely fine with waiting a few years at least. 
like two years at least i i would ask for yeah i don't know i've never played this mystery dungeon game so i'm curious to see exactly what it is it doesn't look like it's for me but i'll at least you know check it out on youtube or something and see what it's about Mm -hmm. moving on to our final story of the week uh Back on some more Pokemon news, Pokemon Go is coming out of its best year ever. I actually just wrote a, uh, I just actually wrote about this for GamePer. Check out my Twitter, I'll be posting that later. Um, So yeah, GamePer, or not GamePer, Pokemon Go is uh, exiting 2019. Uh, Have you looked at the article yet, Joel? No, I have not. Let me, uh, take a guess right now how much money Pokemon Go made in gross okay i player pulled article up, but i but i have not seen um so you're, you're just trying to get me to guess how much money they made yeah this year? just how much money did they make in 2019 <sighs> so i know it's in the millions it is it's in the millions and okay. i will tell you it is their best year ever fuck i don't know is it like over 100 million yes is it under 200 million no <laughs> No? No. 500 million? Higher. No way. They've made an estimated 894 million dollars in shit. 2019. Oh, I I oh I <laughs> I saw the article, I didn't see the headline. <laughs> it literally says nearly 900 million. Yeah. Dude, that is a lot of fucking money. Good. Yeah. Uh so here's here's a little bit of uh information for you since I uh I Like I said, I was writing about this earlier. For uh, all apps in the world, they were only the fifth ranked highest. (laughs) Number four was Candy Crush. And I don't know what two and three were, but number one was a... uh, uh, Crap, what's the name? Uh, Give me a second here. Fortnite. No, it's not Fortnite. Um, Honor of Mobile. Kings from Tencent made $1.5 billion. I've never even heard of that. Fortnite is probably in there in like the two or three range. Uh, so yeah, for location-based games, you got Pokemon Go at $894 million. In second place was Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest Walk at $201 million. <laughs> uh Niantic, the guys that make Pokemon Go, they also released another game in 2019 yep. called Harry Potter Wizards Unite. How that do? Give me some numbers. It made 23 million dollars. <laughs> oh my god! Like, like I I knew that that game like wasn't as popular, but goddamn. But you look at it and you're like, 23 million. That's a lot of money still. But oh, yeah. you just compare it to almost 900 million, which is ridiculous. Um, the Walking Dead, Our World, made 17 million, and Ghostbusters World, like this is the game that Greg Miller yeah. was like really talking about and everything, two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That's two hundred and thirty thousand. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, like, that's ridiculous, right? That's like that's like they gotta be filing for bankruptcy right, right? now, right? It's ridiculous. Um, two hundred thirty thousand dollars, like that's like <laughs> yeah, seven people's salary if they're making like fifty k a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for oh sure. Oh my god. That's ridiculous, right? Uh wow, that hurts me. <laughs> here here's a here's a few more things. Um 54% of the 894 million came from Google Play. Uh it was 482 million dollars. Uh the United States was the highest spending uh country for Pokemon Go, uh followed by Japan and then it like dips way off there. Uh, the U.S. spent 335 million. Uh, Japan spent 286. So just those two together made up 70 percent of the uh, Pokemon Go revenue. Um, so yeah, as I was saying earlier, this is Pokemon Go's best year ever. But there's a little bit of an asterisk next to that, Joel, <laughs> because was that? as of now. Pokemon Go's second best year ever was in 2016, the year it launched. They made yep. $832 million. But didn't it launch in the fall? It launched in July. So they okay. made that much money in half the time. <laughs> yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah. 
Uh, in 2017, they dropped down to 589 million, but in 2018, they rebounded and got back up into the 800 million, so 816 million. And I think that a lot of that is to due to the fact that you know the game came out in 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, everybody was hot on it. But oh yeah. Then they didn't really add anything. No, like it, it took them a year. while to add stuff. Uh, and, and ever since they started adding stuff, which is probably the end of 2017. Yeah. They've just uh, the end of 2017 is where stuff. like the the big updates came out. I think that's where they added like the second generation of Pokemon, and uh, yeah, they started like getting more into like the battles and stuff. Where 2016, I fell off the game within like a matter of weeks because I was like, man, this isn't what I want. Uh, yeah, they're they're just. I, I remember like I played it and I was like, there isn't that much here. It yeah. was basically just catching and you know. <laughs> throwing fucking mm. Pokemon in the trash. But yeah, yeah. then you get to 2018, <laughs> and I downloaded it just so my daughter would like go on walks with me, and we both just quickly got addicted with it. Uh, that Just gotta give a shout-out to Niantic. Like, Pokemon is the most profitable uh, like IP ever already, but like they they did a good job of making sure that this like didn't fade into obscurity. Uh, real quick, this is also the first location based game to ever like make more in a year than its first year. So lots of cool awesome. stuff. Uh, Lifetime, it's made three point one billion dollars so far. So that is it's wild, man. That, it's and, so and, like, insane. The thing about Pokemon Go too is like. If there's a community day or if they release a new raid mm-hmm. and you like go to any like a public park or something that has a, you know, Pokemon gym, so you're going to see like so many people playing that game that you oh, yeah. never would have expected. Oh yeah. It, like, it, like, like you're going to see like old, you're going to see like older couples, like in their fifties. It's like, usually the I, older couples that are like more into it. Like I've seen yeah. older couples like come in with multiple phones. Like this yeah. one guy came in with like six phones on himself with like three different external chargers and everything. It's, it's wild. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But I mean like good on Pokemon or Niantic technically, I mm-hmm. guess. Cause like they really cashed in on this IP really. Like, mm. like this is the IP that could make a killing doing this other, oh, yeah. other than, other than Digimon, you know? Nah, I, <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I wasn't a big Digimon guy, but, um, yeah, yeah, for real. Like this, this is the game to have as a location based game and they're killing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for, I, I don't play Pokemon Go during the winter months because, I don't want to go walking in the cold, but uh, once spring comes around, I'll be right back into it, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it more in the future. Yeah, for real. All right, let's get into the topic of the show, John. All right, Joel, this is from me because I forgot to ask on Twitter if anyone had a topic of the show to give us, but in the future... If you have any ideas, uh, any topics of the show you want us to talk about, be sure to hit us up on at Pixel Street Pod on Twitter or Pixel Street Podcast on Facebook. We will literally talk about anything. Uh, we've talked about the Mr. We Potato talk- Head. We thing talked about in the dogs. We talked about Remember? dogs. Uh, um, uh, my girlfriend asked us something. I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, fa- favorite cover art of yeah. a video game. Yeah, cover art. So, yeah, uh, whatever you have to talk about or whatever you want us to talk about, we will talk about it and give you a shout out. But uh, my topic of the show this week is just kind of looking forward. Uh, I'm done looking at 2019 now. We're in 2020. Uh, although there's a lot of question marks uh, just in general. Like, you can even go outside of gaming. You can, like, go in the movies and stuff if you really want to. What are you most excited for this year, Joel? Most excited for this year? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I we, we have a just, new generation coming up. Yeah, I, I'd say that that's exciting. what I'm most excited for. Like, yeah. even if the launch lineup sucks, I always get super excited to, you know, get that fresh new plastic mm-hmm. in my home, you know, and just fire well, it I up. Think I think this year is interesting. This gen- this upcoming generation is oh, interesting yeah, for sure. because the Series X and the PS5 are already confirmed to be fully backwards compatible with exactly. the Xbox One and PS4. And of course, like 
360 and original Xbox games, some of them will be playable. And there's talk about Mm -hmm. the PS1, 2, and 3 games potentially being playable on PS5. So, like, if you just look at that, like, the launch lineup is already insane for the Series X and the PS5. Because you've got the current generation we're in now already playing. So, Cyberpunk, uh, uh, Doom Eternal, like, all those games that are coming out this year, you could kind of say like that's a early launch lineup for the series x and ps5 yeah yeah so i i would say then yeah the the next generation of consoles yeah um i i really hope that they don't come out like <laughs> within a week of each other again yeah yeah be, well last time i think it was a month no nope, it, like, it was a week i don't think so it was ps4 and then a week later was the xbox one was it yep both in november um ps4 and xbox one release date yeah i'll be uh i'm curious i'll be putting up a video probably or not a video a uh an article tomorrow of like five predictions for the series x uh this year or not just series x but xbox in general and uh i i think the series x is gonna try and get out in front of sony this year i think uh I think you could even see it in like October, like late October. I'm not saying like middle or early October, but I think a uh, late October release for them. And then PS five coming in November, right in front of the holidays there. Uh, I think that's what both sites are going to kind of aim for. Yeah. It's, it's just all so exciting, man. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I, yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to warn my girlfriend, you know, like, money wise mm-hmm. like uh, it's gonna it's gonna take some money out of the savings account for sure. <laughs> yeah uh and man yeah like uh i was saying earlier or yeah the only second half game we fully know about that is coming is halo infinite like halo like we don't know uh we can imagine that there's gonna be another forza game because they took 2019 off, so they've probably been gearing up for... <laughs> get it? Gearing up uh, for the Series X. Uh, yep. Also, uh, the Ubisoft games that got delayed, they were confirmed to come to the Series X and PS5. So Watch Dogs Legion, Gods and Monsters, and Rainbow Six Quarantine are all coming. They'll have their own releases on the Series X and PS5 as well. Um as of games that we know so far, I'm just I'm so excited for Doom Eternal. Uh, this was probably the game I was looking forward to the most in 2019. It got pushed back to 2020, and my hype for it hasn't died down. I'm so excited for this game. I love the 2016 Doom, and uh, I think Doom Eternal is just going to be so much better. Yeah, I started the 2016 Doom, and I just never finished it. So <clears throat> that's something I'll have to go back to sometime. So I'm not too hot on Doom coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure I'll just hear like you on the podcast talk about it a bunch. And oh yeah, I'll be talking about it. Impression. Uh, are there any games like we know about that you're really excited for? Like here in the first few months. In the first few months, I think Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah that's probably something Sound- I won't get into because it's just going to be a big game, and I want to yeah. focus on other games as well. But uh, that's going to definitely be a big topic for discussion, and so. We'll definitely hear yeah, your but thoughts in, on it. In, in terms of games that we know about the whole year, for me, it's Halo. Yeah. I'm a huge Halo nerd, so Halo Infinite. Uh, yeah, this is this is definitely like the most important point in Halo's history. I think. Yeah. Like Infinite, it's, like, it's kind. Of, it's almost like do or die. Yes. Uh, because the, like Halo is just kind of been the same thing over and over mm-hmm. again. Infinite can't less. come out and just be an okay game. Like this needs to come out and be the blockbuster this needs to be the definitive halo experience right now that's master chief collection which is kind of a cheating way because it's got all most of all the uh past games in there and it works now brilliantly let me add but after halo 5 just being a dud like it talk about the marketing was bad the campaign was bad multiplayer was good but there was so much to look at halo 5 and be like man this is kind of just a down release uh going into a new generation and everything this is going to be a day one launch title for the series x like this is the game that xbox is like hey halo is back this is our new console. We're taking our first steps into the next generation with this. It has to knock everyone off their feet, I think. 
Yeah, they really gotta take the God of War approach. Yeah, for sure. And kind of revamp the whole franchise. Oh, man. I am so excited for that game, though. And, and we haven't even seen gameplay of it yet. We've only seen, like, a couple cutscenes or something. I don't yeah. even know what you call it. <laughs> Just trailers, yeah. Yep. Well, that brings us to an end of episode 86 of the Pixel Street Podcast. As always, I am Joel Campos. You can find me on Twitter, at Campos63. Uh, check out our Facebook over on Facebook by searching for Pixel Street Podcast. Uh, we usually post um, our stream VODs from when we stream together and stuff. I forgot to do that for the last one. I'll do that tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, and check out our Twitter account, at Pixel Street Pod. John, where can we find you? On Twitter, I am at Revic Shadows. You can also find me on YouTube. Just search Revic Shadows or go to youtube.com slash johnjw92. Uh, I need to get back into putting up videos on there. But I'm also going to be streaming a bit going forward here. I think all three of us are. Uh, yeah, uh, I can't remember Connor's Twitter. <laughs> it's, like, it's like at the real Birch. Something like that? Uh, I never remember. Yeah, it's it's uh uh connor why why connor all right yeah he is at the real birch that's birch with no i so yeah give us a follow check out our stuff and uh definitely stay tuned for the future yep thanks for listening uh we're excited to be here with you in 2020 um we'll see you next week for episode 87 bye